Hi, I'm Tony Andrews. I'm the developer of the Speedcoach mobile application. And in this video, I want to demonstrate a new feature that will be coming uh, soon to the application. Uh, this feature is designed to make it easier to use the application uh, with head races. Um, and the way it works is that it allows you to um, program in the start and finish line, the location of the start and finish line, uh, for a course or a race and then on the water you can select that course and the timer will start automatically when you cross the starting line and then stop when you reach the finish line and the way this works is that you draw the start and finish lines in Google Earth and then transmit or transfer that information to your iPhone so in this video I'll demonstrate the process for doing that so we'll start with my iPhone connected to my laptop here and I'm in iTunes you can see here's my device and I'm going to click on the apps tab here and if I scroll down to the file sharing section you'll see we have a number of uh, applications here that are able to share files back and forth with my computer uh, Speedcoach is one of these and when I click that you'll see I've got a number of uh, files here containing uh, practice data that I've exported um, from my uh, from my application, different workouts, and also a courses.kml file. And this file is created automatically and it contains just some sample courses uh, for you to get started with. And uh, what we're going to do is use it here as kind of a guide, a starting uh, template that we can use to add courses of our own. So what I'm going to do is save this to my desktop. Okay, and that's done now. So if I exit here and go back to the desktop, you'll see I've got a courses.kml file here. And we'll just double click that to open that up in Google Earth. And you can see here we've got a couple of races, the head of the Charles in Boston and the head of the lake in the Seattle area. So let's double click on that and you'll see it brings up some summary information about the race. And then as we zoom in here to, uh, to Seattle, you'll see we've got the starting line here in this green uh, rectangle and the finish line over here in this red rectangle. And what we're going to do is now add a third course to this file and then put it back on the phone. So you'll see all of these courses here uh, consist of a folder uh, whose name um, tells you the name of, of, the, of the race or the course. And then inside the folder, we have a start and a finish. And these are just, are just polygons that, that we'll add. So let's go to the courses folder here. This is the top of the uh, top of the document and we're going to add a new folder and this will be uh, for the tail of the lake race and in the description section I can add a little bit more about that so we'll just say head race on lake union and so now we've got our tail of the lake folder here and we'll just go create the start and the finish line now. So I'll skip over here and zoom in on the starting line, which is right around here. The officials sit on this dock, and we'll, the starting line will be moving from left to right here. So what I'll do is right click on the folder, and we're going to add a polygon. And the start line has to be named start. That's important. Um, I'll move this out of the way now and we'll put the uh, points in for the polygon for the starting line. So I'll just draw these in really quickly here. And I can move these points around and edit them. Now to account for GPS errors, we want to be sure and make the rectangle a little bit wider than it needs to be. So I'm going to spread it on out here a bit on the map. And the true start line is right about here on the dock. But the way the application works is that to avoid problems with GPS noise, it actually requires two consecutive uh, GPS readings 
inside this polygon, this rectangle. So uh, it's going to take about four meters, four to five meters uh, from that first reading to the second one. And the first reading might not occur, you know, for a little bit, for about a half a second. So, so we want to allow about, you know, eight or ten meters uh, from the line of the polygon to the true line of the uh, of the start. So this should be about right. And we want to make sure this is plenty big enough so that we're sure we're going to catch uh, two to four good GPS signals in there. So we want to be inside that polygon for about four seconds. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to go adjust the color here though. Let's make that green for starting and we'll change the opacity down to 50% just so it looks a little better on the map. And there we've got that. So we're halfway done. I'm going to just scoot over here to the finish line at Gasworks Park and I'll zoom in. And now we'll add another polygon for the finish. And this just needs to be named finish. Scoot that over. And we'll just do the same thing here. So again, I'm going to make this pretty large. And I'll just scoot that out a bit there. You see, I wound up with an extra point there. That's fine. Uh, rectangles are best, but um, additional points won't confuse the application. And again, let's go make this red for the finish line. And that looks pretty good. So now we're done. We've got the start line, the finish line, um, and it's worth mentioning here too that um, if you wanted to add additional lines, for example, if I wanted to to draw some lines to kind of mark the the course on this map, I could do that. We could add additional things under this folder, and that would be fine. Um, Speed Coach Mobile is just going to look for a polygon named Start and a polygon named Finish under the folder. And if there are additional things under there, uh, that's fine. Um, but for now, I'll just leave it at that. And we'll save this back to my laptop. So I'll go to Courses, right-click on that. We'll say Save Place As. Courses.kml is the file name I want. We'll save that, replacing the copy that's already there. And now we're done in Google Earth. So I'll just exit out of that. Uh, we don't need to save that in the temporary places folder. Um, so let's just go back to iTunes now. And I'm going to add the courses.kml file from my laptop. And that's going to replace what's on the phone right now. So I'll click replace. And that transfers immediately to my iPhone. And now the next time I start the application, and uh, go to choose a workout, select the courses list. I'll see the tail of the lake there, and I can select that, and then press the start button, and then as soon as I cross the starting line, uh, the timer will start, and it'll end at the finish. So hopefully this is uh, a good introduction to this feature and, uh, and, uh, and uh, a good uh, overview of how to set that up with Google Earth. Thanks.